So personalized medicine has been around for some time. I um, wonder if you can comment on um, perhaps why it hasn't moved faster than it has? Yeah, yeah as, a, as a concept, it's true. It's been around for, people have been talking about it for 20 years. Uh, I think there are, are a number of reasons why it hasn't moved faster. Uh, some of those are simply to do with uh, our understanding of, of human pathology and human disease. But on top of that, there are other reasons. There are, uh, it's quite difficult to get people to think differently unless there is some kind of crisis. And it's only recently, <laughs> with our rising healthcare budgets and uh, the difficulty in creating new medicines, that the crisis have, has actually arrived. Uh, and now people are starting to think differently. Uh, and and I, think, I think even today, you see um, a reluctance in certain parts of uh, both uh, medical and um, on the commercial sector in actually thinking differently about patients, thinking about patients as individuals. We are still stuck with, uh, in many cases, this idea that everything needs to be statistically valid which prevents us from looking at individual responses. Thank you. Um, and my uh, second question is around the concept of deep profiling mm. um, and perhaps the, um, the necessity to do something more than just genotyping. Yes. I, I think, uh, I mean, th this came home to me personally very clearly when um, some over a decade ago I looked hard at uh, the actual individual responses to particular therapies and it was extremely clear that people were very different. We all know this instinctively, uh, but as I said this has been buried in, in statistics. Uh, what, in order to move forward, and this is, this, this is difficult, in order to move forward we, we, we need to understand much more about individual patients um, uh, and this may mean we have less large numbers at least initially, but by what we call deep profiling, which is, which is first of all, uh, an absolute rigorous medical history, including the drugs that the patients have taken, and most importantly, did the drugs help their condition or not? It's extraordinary, but one of the best definitions of, if you like, pathological mechanisms, does a drug work or not? Uh, including, of course, the uh, risk factors uh, including other environmental factors. Smoking is obvious, we will, we will have that, but a number of other things. Um, uh, uh, a BMI, for instance, body mass index. Uh, interestingly, there are large collections of diabetes patients, samples, clinical samples, without uh, body mass index. So that t tells you where, we, where, we've, where we're coming from and what we need to do. So I think if you put all of this together, you put, put together clinical data, response data, genes uh, and of course other bits and pieces of omics and, and um, anything you can measure, then I think there's a very real chance of, of redefining disease, uh, uh, which will then help us of course to do two things. First of all, it tells us which patients we already have a therapy for and then it, it defines new on medical need by saying for these patients with this definition we don't have a therapy and therefore we can start to work out what we might do there. If we don't do that, progress will be very limited as we've seen.